Well, what is going on, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Tyler's Drill Fishing. I'm out here today with Nick Starkle, the quarterback for Texas A&M University. Insert sick football footage here. catching some white bass today on Lake Somerville. Oh, We're yeah. gonna have a good time. Nick, how long has it been since you went fishing? Man, it's been a while. A long time? On a boat, probably about six years, honestly. Yeah. It's been a while, but it's a good day so far. It's a good day. We'll see you guys when we catch some fish. Actually, we're already catching some fish, so we'll see you guys later <laughs> on. He got oh oh I got one bring it in bring it in Nick it's a giant <laughs> absolute giant that thing's huge I know never seen one that big. could feed a family of five all right first fish with Mr. Starkle look at that man boom there we go here we go got him on the popper once more oh a large mouth look at that Looks large eat the day. There we go. There you go. You can tell they're large because of the way they are. Of the way they are. <laughs> oh, I think she has ALS. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you can't. Nick can't get through a full sentence without me catching a fish. This. <laughs> that is a white one. That's a white one. Yes. It's a white one. What's it? It's a white. White bass. It's a white bass. Now the large mouth are actually called. Like there's there's many terms for them. There's large mouth. There's large eats, and then there's black bass. Somebody calls them black bass. I don't, because they're not black whatsoever. They're green. Yeah, no, they're yeah, they're definitely green. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm Get that fish. Get that fish, Nick. Send it. Come on, get you one. Come on, come get you one, fish. Uh huh. Come on, fish. Oh, oh, got him. He got him one. Yes. Got him one. Bring him in. Bring him in. We're having an extravaganza today. Oh, he's not little. He's a nice one. Good one. Bring him in. Nice. Good stuff. So tell us, what are some interesting facts about the white bass? Um, some interesting facts about the white bass mm -hmm. would be that um, I just caught one. <laughs> uh. Thing looks a lot like a football. How far do you think you can throw it? So, I could probably throw this thing Good 65 yards. <laughs> look! Actually, not a lot, but it's not bad. Dude, the largemouth are up shallow. I'm telling you. Ooh. Nice one. He'll go in the live well. He'll go in the live well. Whoa! Hey there. Hey there. Let me up my drag a little bit. <sighs> right under the boat. You just gotta give him time sometimes. It's not a bad one. Yes. Man. Yes. Nice fish. Boom. There we go. Now that's that's a classic Texas largemouth. Nice and chunky. Look, he's got a he's got a messed up lip. He's been caught a time or three. <laughs> <laughs> largemouth aren't the smartest. Aren't the smartest fish. Nice. There we go. That one's gonna go in the uh, in the box. In the box. In the old live well. In ye live well. Getting in the water. Getting in the dirty. See, you gotta know your fish. I know. You gotta, you gotta know where they live if you want to catch them. That's so true. Hey, here, hop on that trolling motor. Let's roll out of here. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no you sailed that bowl way outside. Yeah, that was, I, threw, I threw that th one away. Did you mean to throw it away? Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's one of those, you know, 
If she were in the wrong route, it just yeah, it's just bad. Yeah. Blame on the fish though. Exactly. Let's, let's see. How did we meet? So we, we we saw each other at Passion, but I already knew you then. And okay. Then we had yeah. lunch. We had lunch at Piata. We had, yeah, we had yeah. That's where we met. We met at Piata. Yeah. I just knew. I just knew you as the fisher, the fisher dude. Yeah. And, and and then and then it was like a familiar face. I was like, oh. Uh huh. I like this guy. I lured you in. Ha! <laughs> these fish down my Oh, got him. Perry, that's a bass. Oh, Perry. Yeah, it's a good one. Dude, Perry's, Perry's got a good bass. Oh my gosh! Perry Holly, you dirty dog. Perry. You dirty dog. Just, just play him. Play, am I recording? I am. Oh, you dirty, oh. You dirty dog. Oh. Oh. Just. Oh. Oh, oh man. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh. Yes, Perry. Yes. Yes! Perry! Perry! <laughs> I don't know oh, if it's no, PB, no, no, but it's, it looks a lot bigger that's pretty... There, but Dude. That's a certified lunk, Perry. That is a... the definition of a lunk. <laughs> Did you give me, give me some of that? Oh! Perry! Oh, man. Dude, wow. I, I gotta get a picture of this, dude. Perry is big. <laughs> That's at least like a three and a half, yeah. maybe four pounder. I like, it. I like it a lot. There you go. <laughs> right, oh, Perry. Perry. When the camera guy one. picks up a rod, <laughs> expect this. Here, hold him out. Hold him out regular. Nice. That's what I'm talking about. Let's go. Oh, on the popper. Yeah. He's got another one. On the popper? Bring him in, yes. This is a white bass. It is a white bass. That is all I know about the white bass. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah you don't want to get hooked. By no. Him. There you go. And then always got to be careful with these because they can shake and get treble hooks in you. And I don't want to be ripping a hook out of your hand today. See ya. He's swimming again. Uh huh. Go home, fish. Welcome to this episode of Taste the Bait. Wait, Guess the Bait. Dang it, I messed that intro. This episode of, of Guess the Bait. Today we have uh, this, this mystery bait that some of you guys might know what it is, but Nick has no clue what the name of this bait is. And so, first off, if you know the name of this bait, comment below. But we're gonna, ha we're gonna give him uh, three choices on the name of this bait, and he's gonna choose which one. Sound good? That sounds good, that sounds okay. good. Three is fair. Yeah. Three, three is fair. So, the first bait is going to be a wide-tailed glide bait. All right. Wide-tailed glide bait. Okay. I feel like that's okay. Go, go try this. That's the second one. The second bait. It's going to be a whopper plopper. And the second I, bait. I mean, and the third. The third. You ready for this one? Yeah. The disturbance. I feel like I shouldn't choose whopper plopper. Uh huh. But I'm gonna choose Whopper Plopper. <laughs> That's it. Oh, yes. It's the Whopper oh, Plopper. Oh, I really thought you just made that up. I did not make that up. You know why? It Comment it? and make sure that that's a real bait. Someone like search that. Make sure that's the real bait. The and Whopper it's... Plopper. Okay. You know all why, right. You know why it's called that? Why? Because it whops and plops. You know. <laughs> of course. Why, yeah. Why wouldn't it be called the Whopper Plopper? And it catches lungs. You know. Yeah. Big old lungs. That's what we want. PB, your personal best fish. Well, I feel like when everyone tells their, their personal best fish story, it gets uh -huh. a little bigger every time. Of course. It was probably about, it's probably like eight pounds. It was a, it was a big okay, one. Okay, that's a good one. It's a big one. Yeah, yeah. That's like, that's like a saltwater like striped bass. Yeah. Okay, got it. How'd you catch it? Um, you know, I, I got this fishing pole and I, mm -hmm. I cast it out there. And then um, <laughs> when I started reeling it in, you know, felt this bass. That's really, really descriptive. Yeah. Water. If we get one over five pounds, uh -huh. I'll jump in the water. Okay. Well, Perry, you better start fishing. Yeah, I was about to say, I can turn this off for a second. <laughs> I DM'd, uh, got him. Large mouth on the spinner bait. These fish are definitely a lot more, a lot more pale. And that's because the, uh, the water clarity is more kind of dingy around here. 
So the clearer water, kind of the, the, the more beautiful a fish looks in terms of like greenery or how green it is. And when the water's dirty like it is up here, they're more, I wouldn't call them ugly because I love these fish, but they're definitely not as pretty as they are <laughs> in the south regions. Let's get a release. So for those of you guys who follow my channel a lot, you guys know that I am a Christian. I'm very open about my faith here on the channel. And Nick is a believer as well, and he's very open about his faith on his social medias. And so Nick, just kind of tell them, my, my viewers, kind of a little bit about like what it's like being like a Christian in the, I guess, like very popular, you know, sports atmosphere, football, like biggest mm -hmm. sport in America. What's it like to be a, an openly Christian person in that, in that field? Yeah, I think, um, I think it, just standing for anything, you know, as, as an athlete, staying for anything um, is, is hard because a lot of people want to tell you what you are and, yeah. you know, what your worth is. And I mean, you can go online if you wanted to and read, you know, who people are saying you are. Yeah. And, you know, they think that's a fact, like, oh, this is who he is. He's a bad player. He's this guy off the field, everything like that. Yeah. And, um, and really, you just got to know, like, you got to know your worth. I mean, I know, I know my worth. I know where my identity lies. Exactly. And that it's not in football or any circumstances like that. And, and my identity, you know, lies in, in what Jesus did on the cross. And so for me, that's what's gotten me through. Exactly. Just, you know, uh, the highs and the lows of this sport and, uh, you know, <laughs> of you know social media and everything nowadays with it because i'm sure i know i have haters telling me how i don't catch fish right but i'm sure you have people telling you he doesn't throw right <laughs> oh yeah his hands are too i don't know what size your hands are he's too, <laughs> he's too slow he's i don't know what what the critics say about you but yeah it's just cool that we know like our our, our hope is in jesus christ and like, like we're going to spend eternity with him someday yeah um which yeah. is just a greater hope to hold to than you know for always sure. being successful in our craft but exactly exactly but he, is, he is a stick at uh, throwing that ball a stick is a term that we use in fishing for like being good at fishing. So I don't okay, know, like, I guess uh, yeah, I guess I'm a stick. You'd be yeah. like a ball pump. This dude's a pump. <laughs> Where's shines? We're gonna we're gonna have you. I'm gonna have you grab a fish. <laughs> right now. I'm gonna see if you can do it. Oh, grab one of these. All right, here he goes. They're gonna bite me. No, they don't. They don't bite. Yes, they do. They don't bite that much. Should I go for the small one? Uh, whatever you want. So I just literally just stick my fingers in there. And yeah, you kind of in his mouth. You kind of open his mouth. Oh shoot, he's not moving. I'm scared now. <laughs> Dude, I'm scared of this thing. You do, they don't bite. Yes, they do. <laughs> Get it. Oh, jeez, oh. you see his teeth? <laughs> oh gosh, his mouth is huge. Yes. yes. Oh jeez, oh. it moved. It... Oh jeez, dude. <laughs> All right, we'll give, you, we'll give you a break. That was good. Show me how it's done. All right, I'll show you how it's done. Show me how it's done. There we go. Where's he at? That him? What the heck? <laughs> that was so you easy. It. You just gotta, it takes practice. Lots of practice. Heck well, let's, no. Let's get this interview going. <laughs> well, howdy everybody and welcome to another seg segment we like to call... Mm, <laughs> to another segment we like to call... Water Bottle Talk. We don't want to say it in unison. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. Well, everybody, we're going to take a break from fishing. We're going to go to a segment we like to call... Water, Water Bottle, Bottle Talk. talk. We're going to start off with some questions to ask Mr. Starkle. Um, what is a nickname that people gave you often growing up? Growing up, um, every year, whenever my name was called, mm -hmm. Starkle obviously sounds a lot like Sparkle. Yes. So they called me Sparkle. But then the most interesting nickname that I got was NC Sparkler. Uh -huh. Because my first name is Nick, my middle name is Cooper, so it was NC Sparkler. And that yes. was my favorite one. NC Sparkler. That sounds like a rapper. Describe your like your 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 dream football play. Okay, yeah. So dreams can come true. So I hope this comes true. Yeah. Uh, I dream of, I I dream <laughs> of, one day one day, running the ball, mm -hmm. and it being like over like thirty yards, and then like for some reason there's someone standing on the goal line. Yeah. And I have to like jump over them and like stick the ball out. Oh. Like something like really like heroic like. So it's a running touchdown. It's a running touchdown. It's not a pass okay. touchdown. It's a running touchdown. Got it. When you pull up to a gas station, what is your optimal snack and drink combo? That's what I was going to ask you. Oh, too late. Yeah, I got to get a Gatorade. Okay. But if it's not during the season, it's in the off season, you know, it's like I'm on a break. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get a vanilla Coke. Ooh. Vanilla Coke. I like that. And then I'm a big fan of Snickers. So I'm going to get a Snickers. Okay. And then 
say I have like a little extra cash. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna splurge and I'm gonna get some potato chips, but I'm gonna get these specific kind Zaps mm. Voodoo potato chips. They have them at some of the restaurants at College Station. Interesting. Right? They're amazing. Go try them. Salt and sea salt and vinegar. It's a okay. mixture of those two, so it's it's really good. That was cool. <laughs> Sorry, nature. We had to we had to observe what, what was going on there. Um, what are the odds of that? Wait, what are the odds that a butterfly lands on on the Nestle symbol, man? That's how you know they love nature. That Fortnite or PUBG? Fortnite. We're gonna switch it up. I'm gonna ask the question. Okay. Say you're in a zombie apocalypse, okay? Yeah. Put, you, put your mind there. My mind is already, always there. Okay. You have to have a close quarters, blunt force trauma weapon. <laughs> what are you using? Definitely a frozen ribeye. A frozen ribeye? Yeah. Interesting. Uh huh. Because think about it zombie apocalypse, you're frozen to run on anyways. And yeah. So if it starts frozen, you kill some zombies, you let it thaw out, and then you got yourself a delicious New York strip. You know, or I don't know, is that a ribeye? Yeah, I don't know. If you didn't play football, what, what activity would you want to be good at? Um, so I did theater okay. when I was in like middle school and high school, mm -hmm. and that is something that I think like theater arts or being an actor would be really cool. Now, can you give us a, just a little snippet of kind of your, your theater talent? Um, I could. What's your signature dance move? Like when you show up to like a party, what dance move are you rocking? I, I really like the Carlton. Uh-huh. I just really, I just, you know. Hey, yeah. So we had this discussion earlier. A fish, as a bass, is very similar to a wide receiver. Why is that? Yeah, you know, I think that, um, you know, just fishing relates to football a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, you gotta just, sometimes you gotta take what the defense gives you. You gotta just, you know, throw a couple lines out there. Sometimes uh -huh. you might not get that much. You might only get, you know, a yard or two on some of those run plays. That's but true. But you're setting up for a bigger, you're setting up for a huge play action, right? Huge. And then when you get that lunk, <laughs> that's like hitting, you know, <laughs> I can't do this anymore. <laughs> when you get that big fish, uh -huh. it's like hitting that, you know, the play action, hitting that post, uh -huh. where it's a huge gain. Oh, yeah. It's just, you know, and then sometimes, you know, you put the ball right in the right place, or you put, you know, you put the bait right out there, uh -huh. and it's just, you know, the wide receivers and the fish aren't biting. I know. You know. Wide receivers can't catch it sometimes. No. And of course, you always blame it on the bass. You all have a rough day of fishing. Oh, man, the fish just weren't biting. He goes <laughs> out there. You know, I mean, the receivers just didn't play well. Exactly. Although if you were to go in a press conference and straight up blame your receivers, that'd be, that'd be bad. <laughs> that has been an episode of water, that has been an episode of water, water bottle, bottle talk. talk. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get some more fish. Well, everybody, that is the video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I know I had a blast getting to hang out here with Nick Starkle, and I'm quarterback. Definitely had fun putting him on his first few fish in a while. Now, do you have any words of wisdom to, uh, to leave us with? When in doubt, throw a line out. When in doubt, throw a line out. And of course, always remember, blame the fish. Just like the wide receivers, you can, you can blame the fish. If they're not biting, it's, it's, it's definitely their fault. I hope you guys learned a few things. Sorry I wasn't uh, able to teach you guys a whole lot throughout this episode, but I have plenty of other videos for you guys to learn how to fish. If you guys want to follow him on Instagram, it'll be linked below. Nick, Nick, Nicholas dot Starkle, Nick Starkle. What is One it? of those. One, One of those. those. It's gonna be linked down below. We'll see you guys in the next episode of Tyler's Real Fishing. Oh, I, I missed. I missed. Oh.